All right, now we're going to move into techniques for revising the content and the structure. Uh, you, you may be wondering about revisions. Now, it can be a bit intimidating for sure, but don't worry, we've got you covered with the top 10 techniques for revising. Number one, take a break. After you have completed your manuscript, your, your first draft, then you want to just like take some time, one day, two days, a week, just put the thing completely out of your mind and do whatever you would be doing, you know, catch up with your other things, whatever. But then come back in a few days and you should have had some time to have a mental reset and you'll be able to, you know, have fresh eyes and a new perspective. And that really helps. Number two, evaluate your structure. The next technique is to look at the order and, you know, of the events in your story, the pacing, consider rearranging like we talked about or cutting content out to improve the flow of your memoir. Number three, cut unnecessary content. Now, by, by cutting unnecessary content, it may be something that's important to you, and if it is, you leave it. If it, if it doesn't help the story, or explain things or give any answers, then you really might want to cut and paste it somewhere else because it doesn't mean it doesn't have value. It just may not belong in that story. So just give it a, a good, you know, going over and, and see if there's anything that needs to be cut out. Number four, refine your voice. You know, as you go through, you you start typing, you're, or maybe you're even handwriting, but you need to be, you know, typing this out and kind of, you may get into the weeds emotionally and you may, you know, yeah, then that happened and then that happened and then this, that, that. And you might just kind of get into this, um, the zone for lack of a better word, uh, and, and then you read it and you're like, this doesn't even sound like me. So if you see that, and it will happen a lot of the time, if you see that, that it doesn't sound like you, that's okay. That's what this is for. That's exactly the right time to go back through and refine your voice. Break it into smaller paragraphs and then and put dialogue in. Do whatever you need to do to make it sound like you. Number five check for consistency. Consistency, guys, is something that you may think your reader is not looking at, um, and, and they may not be reading it critically with the intent to find loopholes or where you've erred, but when a reader is on the outside looking in and they're totally getting engrossed in your story, the least little thing might totally derail their focus and their attention because they might be, you know, like maybe he was in, in that side of the living room and then the next time you talk to him, he's, he's in an office and you're like, wait a minute, how, how did he get there? And you have to make sure that there's consistency uh, getting from A to Z. Uh, use the the asterisks and the uh, scene dividers or chapter dividers, things like that. If if they literally are moving somewhere else or if time has changed, uh, just make sure that it's consistent and your reader can keep up with you. Number six, enhance descriptions. This is a really great time to, you know, maybe you talked about um, let's see the, the first time you ever put on leg warmers, man, I don't even know where that came from. Uh, <laughs> but you know, maybe you just said, I got a pair of leg warmers for Christmas. They were my favorite. Um, and maybe that's, that's all you've got in there, but maybe, you know, maybe it's something that you can really go deeper on and, and talk about those leg warmers because if they were your favorite, if it gives something to your character, 
and and it tells more about your personality you know maybe they were those rainbow ones um or or whatever you know maybe they were like just neon orange and you know, maybe you had some toad socks also and you wore them together. You know, whatever this the story is, go deep on some of those things because you miss a lot of opportunities to really let your reader get to know you better. And, and things that you think nobody's interested in, that's what makes you unique. That's what makes you you. And they are interested. So don't don't tell them about a mole on your shoulder unless it's like really really unique you know they don't they're not interested in the mole but it, they're interested in what drives you emotionally and if if something uh really made you happy you know it maybe at a darker time in your life and those leg warmers made you feel like all the rest of the kids and you didn't feel like an outcast whatever it is you know share that so use these opportunities to enhance your descriptions number seven incorporate feedback now this is super important after you've completed your own editing you want to you want to have a friend or two uh to read along with you to to pick out areas that might be confusing it's called beta readers and basically what they do is they they'll read it and they they haven't followed it all the way through all of your edits they didn't see it before so they don't know how it's already improved or or been you know evolved but they get it in what you think is the done version and they'll be like okay so is this saying that this is this or is this saying this and you'll be like ooh if they've got a question then other people probably will have that same question. And so you need to look at anything that, that they alert you to and see if that's something that you need to clarify, you know, either go a little deeper, add a little more detail, um, or or maybe, maybe what confused them is why is this even here if it doesn't have anything to do with the story? So it may need to be cut and, and pasted somewhere else, you know, so really important to, have those those people you trust who actually will read it and give quality constructive feedback number eight tighten up your writing now we've talked about this a little bit tighten up your writing by removing unnecessary words or phrases uh there's there's and it happens a lot but there are sometimes uh i'll, I'll read a draft and someone might say uh, I, I felt like, or uh, I couldn't help but think, you know, when, when they say that, those are unnecessary words. All you have to do is say, I thought, or, or even better, use a, a descriptive uh, in an action to show that they thought instead of them telling you that they thought so or you telling them that they thought um but by doing that you're able to to cut out the words and honestly if you if you repeat phrases over and over again it actually you know kind of like nails on a chalkboard uh it actually annoys some readers so they will be like eh, i just i can't even finish it because they just keep saying these one phrases over and over and over again so be real careful about that uh tighten up your writing and remove anything that's repetitive or unnecessary number nine use active voice uh, the reason you want to use active instead of passive is it just it, it's more engaging. Uh, if if someone said uh, I'm at a, a a dance, you're at a nightclub or something, you know, and I'm doing this and and dancing and and there was a limbo uh, contest. Uh, so would you say there was a limbo contest? Um, you can you can kind of visualize someone you know trying to do the limbo or um i i'm in round three of the limbo contest you know and, and whatever it is just find a way to try to make your 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 voice active instead of passive 
And number 10, very important, read aloud. You know, and I've said this before, I, I literally, uh, I, I use it in Microsoft uh, Word most often, but I will, uh, there's other apps that you can copy and paste and it'll, it'll read something to you. Uh, I use this to edit almost everything because it is so important. You will not see most of, you'll see some of them, but you won't see most of the things that you've, oops, as you go through. So it's really, really important that you either read it aloud. Um, and even when you read it aloud yourself, you'll automatically sometimes say what your mind is thinking and you'll miss it anyway. So that's why I really like to use something where it reads it to me as I follow along and, and you know, in the lines and make the changes as I hear uh, someone else's voice saying something that I'm like, Ooh, that's not it. That's not what I meant to say, you know, cause sometimes autocorrect will, will be your biggest, uh, enemy instead of your, your, your ally. So just make sure that you read aloud and definitely look at, um, it's on the review tab of word review. And then I think it just says read aloud. Uh, but you will love that. Uh, Revising, guys, is super important, super, super, super important. When you write, you have emotions and you should. When you edit and revise, you put the emotions on the back burner for a moment and you you get critical and, and really fix it up and know where your reader is going to take their journey with you. All right, let's keep moving.